Well, good morning. We made it to Friday. I hope you've had a good week and it hasn't been quite as chaotic as ours. Um, but yes, we are in the spare at the weekend. And hopefully so why talk to about work. the chaos of our lives? It's not chaotic, it's just very busy day. Chaos would, it, would mean that you nothing was organised. I say chaotic. No, it's organised chaos. Mm, exactly. Organized chaos. We're going to start with a song, just for something different today. Hope that's okay. Um, lovely to see you, by the way. And if you are watching it later on, uh, do leave us your comments. Some of you have, which is great. Um, uh, but if you're joining us live, well done. And let's so see you here. So here's, here's a song. It's called Praise Him. This is Praise Him. <laughs>
Jonathan just tells us what's happened to his hair. I don't know. You're not supposed to actually <laughs> say things. Shall I mention what you said to me this morning? <laughs> uh, dear me, How on earth have we got through 17 years of marriage? Because that is what it is tomorrow. That's impressive. 17 isn't it? years of marriage. It's tomorrow. Not that it's Hannah tomorrow. It's Sunday. Not, not that Hannah remembers ever. It's Sunday. About. <laughs> it's my sister's birthday today. Well, Hannah doesn't remember that uh, my sister Lorraine had her birthday evening meal out the night before our wedding. She did? Because she our wedding was on the 25th, which is tomorrow. I thought it was the 24th today. It is I'm in the 23rd. The... No, I'm not even... Listen, I'm going to check my watch. <clears> that will actually tell me the time. One of us will get an anniversary card tomorrow <laughs> and an anniversary present. I've got your card and present. I've wrapped it, but... Ah, you know. uh, good great. Anyway. anyway, hope you enjoyed the song. <laughs> and uh, as uh, we've just pointed out, it's September. It's late in September. We're officially in autumn, and it's our second eleventies of the autumn. Twenty second of September is the start of autumn. I did not know that. There you go. You see, occasionally, <laughs> going to stand you with. So you know when the date of autumn starts, just not the date of our wedding. No, I know the date of our wedding. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I might need to forget that in a hurry, am I? Anna, hello, how are you doing? Lovely, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you. happy anniversary. What's That's the secret for happiness? That's what we were talking about. We were indeed. Secret for happiness. Having the mo most independent lives you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last time we said it could uh, be uh, uh, lots of things. Some people said it was gin. Uh, some people implied that that was something that I liked. I can't think what that was. Um, why you don't like gin, though, do you? I'm not really a big... No. no just... Hannah's a whiskey person. Single malt particularly. Normally mixed with coffee. Can you mix single malt with coffee? Uh, it keeps you awake. Stops you falling asleep. Um, good night's sleep certainly makes us happy. It's a very rare thing in this house. So, uh, I think doing 11sies together has kept our marriage strong and happy the last two years, darling. <laughs> actually, it's been good because it, it showed us that we could work together. We could actually well, work as if together. We didn't know Obviously, that we work together, but I actually do a job together. I'll well. tell you what would make me happy. Some more work in the arts. That would make us all happy. She's implying that she can get rid of me again. No, because you're happier when you're you're doing that as well as all the other stuff that you do. That's why. It makes you happy. Anna's just been really lovely about you. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> you need to be lovely about Jonathan too. Uh yes, it is it is chaotic our lives and busy. Chaotic chaotic in a good way, I'm sure of it. 
Right, we're going to start from Psalm 1 yeah, again. Yeah, I'm going to stop blathering on. We uh, did our first session on Monday about this. If you want to catch up, please do. It's still there. Uh, thank you for the people that have liked it and have caught up already. Um, we actually do enjoy doing this. We missed it over the summer, haven't we? No, we do. So it's nice. It's yeah. nice. It's good because we actually get to catch up with each other as well, which doesn't happen much during the rest of our lives. So uh, it's good. When was that? that way. Can we catch up over the summer? Well, we didn't. That's the point. Is we catch up with each other while we're doing this. Oh, so now we're catching up. Now we're up. catching up with each now other. Now we've had our two month yeah. break. We're catching up with each other. We're now catching as up. As well as everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Notice there is a common factor here. There are no children in the room. Oh, asleep. Yes. Psalm yeah. 1, 1 to 2. Go on, Hannah. Give it to us. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. So we looked at the word blessed or blessed on Monday and uh, it means the state that God wants to restore us to, this kind of Eden state. No, it doesn't mean getting completely naked again. That is not what it means. What does it mean, Hannah? It means about kind of that friendship relationship that we had with God right at the beginning, getting back to that again. When he actually came and walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, it's one of the most beautiful, one of the saddest passages in the Bible when God comes to walk in the garden and he can't find them and they're hiding because they suddenly realise the state that they're in and don't actually want to face God. And an incredible thing where God wants to restore that relationship where we can walk with him and talk with him again, just like we could uh, at the beginning of time. I don't know where we are. <laughs> so back in the Old Testament, uh, the Jew Jews thought it's going, well it was, it's going really well. Um, they thought that they could do this. They could get back to this Eden-like state by sacrificing um, and keeping lots and lots of laws. There were lots in the Torah um, and keeping all the festivals and celebration days and adding lots of extra laws as well, just to make sure they were doing things um, right. Well, there's only a couple. There's only like 623 it's or something. Not many, like. not many at all. Uh, I could keep track of those, definitely. They're like Absolutely. the laws that I make for our household. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I see. So, God didn't want that though. He had a different plan. <laughs> <laughs> and it came through a carpenter's son and a young girl called Mary. His name was announced by angels, celebrated by shepherds, and worshipped by wise men from afar. He was prophesied over as a baby by a man called Simeon, and rejoiced over by a woman called Anna. And as a t teenager, he simply amazed the priests of the temple. And his name was Jesus. I'm going to carry on with your music. <laughs> You're doing so well. <laughs> To have a relationship with God, you have to accept his son as your saviour. He is the blessed path. I am the way, the truth and the life, said Jesus. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do you know Jesus this morning? We looked at walking and standing and sitting down. They're like three states that we have when we're going through life. Just walking casually past somebody, saying hello to them to standing and actually having a conversation with somebody which is more detailed towards sitting down and having a drink with them, a coffee or a, or a drink down the pub or maybe actually sharing a meal with them. It's a much deeper state, it's a deeper relationship that you have with somebody uh, when you do that. And we asked, who, um, who do you uh, keep in your company? Who do you listen to? Who do you turn to when you're in trouble or upset or need help? Do you know Jesus? Um, do you see your life and everything about your life through the lens of Scripture? Or would you prefer to watch Lorraine on this morning? Is she still on this morning? I've got no idea. I think so, yes. I think she has her own show now. Does she? Yeah. Is it She's called Lorraine? Lorraine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would make sense. Who do you listen to? You know, is their influence on you really positive? Do they have any influence on you to do with God being in your life? Or 
can you tell sometimes when you have a relationship or might be even somebody in your family that can be corrosive on you, somebody at work, somebody that you just want to avoid because you know that the contact with them uh, doesn't lead to a particularly brilliant place? I think we all know somebody like that, don't we? So, back to the verses again. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. We like walking a lot. I used to walk a lot more before we had lots of little people who <laughs> prevented me from doing quite it was all so much holidays, walking. wasn't it, really? Yeah, we, we always used to go yeah. on walking holidays. Even when I was pregnant with Freya, we were like heavily pregnant, going up the Rhine Og Mountains and various other... Um, places. Um, Jonathan, when he's walking, can go at quite a pace. I do. Um, literally, everyone else is jogging behind him. <laughs> um, uh, you can't walk slowly, can you? I can't, and also the walks we do are generally very long. Okay, so no, if, you've got to if we walk slowly, we would just going. never get back. Although day to day, with if, if I've got someone in the push chair, then I walk quite quickly. Shirley always says she has to jog along with as well. So I guess it depends what you're doing. Um, but they are very good for children at keeping they a are. step with you. They are. They're amazing. Well, the big four are. The little three couldn't. Ruth is getting better. Is she? She is. Are you sure? She just needs a friend there to keep her going. Theo. Yeah. yeah. When she's got him, she's great. They can go yeah. run off then together. Then they lead. They do. That linked in with something, didn't it? We've gone off on point again. <laughs> <laughs> in Psalm 119, it says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. So uh, it leads the way. It kind of is the person that's setting the pace, a bit like Jonathan on his uh, walks. It's the word of God sets the pace for our lives if we follow it. Do you know where you're going? And how do we find out? We find out by reading God's word. I was talking to the children in Sunday school about this only this week. And it says here, meditating on it day and night. So literally all the time. Now, that's interesting because I don't think God needs us to be reading it 100% of the day because we have other stuff to do as well. Um, but I think what it means is that it can be helpful in every moment. When you're frustrated, when you're annoyed, when you're angry, if you're grieving, if you're feeling joy or boredom or pain, whatever it is you're feeling, God's word can guide us and lead us out of it and through it. It's like a good tune though, isn't it? It's like it comes to mind uh, at certain points, like when you're walking along or when you know, you're down the gym or when you're doing something else. Yeah. Um, you know, Rifka always asks for music every single morning when we're in the car. And I think that's the thing about God's word. If you read it, if you start to understand it, if it starts to get inside your head and your heart, it's recalling it at those mm. times which are really stressful. And, you know, you're going down the train to an important meeting or you're driving and getting really frustrated in the traffic or something really uh, challenging has happened in your life. And that's when God's word can have such an impact. Um, it's a bit like the, um, you know, I don't know whether you've got a Bible, but there's one called the Life Application Bible, which is very good because it helps explain little bits of it. And it has maps and comments and things and handy hints. It's a bit like a map when you're walking. If you don't have that map in front of you, um, you don't know where you're going. And the Bible's a little bit like that. If it gets dark on your route, there's no point in having a torch in the bottom of your backpack. You need to have it there out in front of you. And there's no point having a Bible, which is God's instruction manual, um, and not reading it. It can't really do very much for you at all. Um, it says in the message, by your words I can see where I'm going. They throw a beam of light on my dark path. I'll turn the page now, not very subtle. <laughs> and in Deuteronomy 32, 47, these instructions are not empty words. They are your life. By obeying them, you will enjoy a long life. What happens if we start to really let God's work do uh, a work within our lives and our hearts? Well, verse 3 of our psalm tells us that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and his leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. It's a wonderful picture. Um, Jesus said he was the living water to a woman at the well who had seven Husbands, this is where the seven husbands come in, you see. Not all at the same time, though. No. 
obviously not. And she'd had seven husbands and she was in a relationship with somebody that wasn't her husband. Scandalous. Mm -hmm. She was trying to satisfy herself with relationships. How many of us have done that? Whether it's satisfying ourselves with relationships, one after the other, whether it's by work, whether it's by you know the next holiday we're going on, or the next car that we're looking at, or a bigger house, or even vicariously through our children about what school they're going to, what they're going to study, which university they're going to, what job they're going to actually be following. You know, who are they with? What's their partner like? You know, planning, planning for stuff to do with that. Whatever it may be, are you really satisfying yourself with those things? Jesus said to her, stop. He said, there is only one thing that will truly satisfy you. And that is something that I can provide you with, living water. He was actually talking about himself. He was talking about what he had come on this earth to provide for us, to be the saviour of the world, to be the light and the life in our hearts and our minds. If you drink that, Jesus says, you will be a tree planted by streams of water, which yield fruit in season. In other words, you'll be a blessing to everyone around you. Now, not everybody likes figs or apples or plums. Not everyone's got differences there. You can't help that. But for the people that do, you will be loved and the fruit you'll bear. And it's twofold because you'll be doing what God wants. So he'll bless the work of your hands. But you'll also be the person he wants you to be blessed and made right with him in Jesus. And so he will make other fruits grow. As it says in Galatians, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The Spirit comes to live in you and begins transforming you. Will he make you more boring? Well, no. I hope you enjoyed this with us. And we have the Spirit of God living inside us because we believe in Jesus. It still means you can be cheeky, you can be funny, you can still have a laugh. You can still enjoy all the things God has given you to enjoy, but it just means you're starting to have a relationship with him. And it's not all going to be plain sailing. There are going to be things in your life which is going to be challenging. And we all know that. In our heart of hearts, we know that there's not everything right in our minds and our hearts. We know, for example, at the moment, there's real struggles going on with some of our kids, some of our kids with their schools and their mental health with all this stuff that's gone on with COVID and with other issues. But the Lord will be with you and the Holy Spirit will begin to transform you. And these things will start to grow in your life. In Revelation, that's the last book of the Bible, it says, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. That's a really nice verse to end with, isn't it? It's beautiful. And that's the point, actually. That's what God wants to do. He wants to heal us inside out. And then that, that healing, that sense of being healed, just flows out of us to other people. So lovely of you to join us. Thank you so much. So great to see you, Anna, as well. Um, just really pray the Lord would truly bless you. We're going to uh, just, I think, finish with singing one more song. Or are we just going to finish praying? Yeah, what song? It's Friday. What That's a beautiful it. name. Yeah, I think it's a good one. We'll have Ripka's favourite. We meant to sing this on Sunday. That was very naughty, but we didn't. So we're going to have What a Beautiful Name. Before we do, I'm going to ask Hannah to pray. Father, oh, thank you that you're here with us today and uh, whatever we're doing, whatever we're going through, um, when we invite you in, you're there right with us in the midst of it all. And um, I thank you that you do heal and you do mend and you do fix and you do take away our worries and mm. you help us work through those parts of our lives that we're not very proud of, the things that we struggle with. But thank you that we don't have to struggle with those things on our own because you've said you will help us. And you always give us a way out when we are struggling to begin with. So I just pray you be with everyone over the weekend. Um, bless the services on Sunday. And 
Jesus in the coming year. Amen. Let's have a little song. This is what a beautiful name. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory.
fantastic weekend everyone we'll hopefully see you on sunday at 10 30 uh, either physically at bell baptist or uh, you can join us online and we will be back on monday morning okay. so uh, farewell we're going to have a wonderful anniversary as hannah remembers uh, which day our anniversary is on uh, either sunday <laughs> it's on the 25th tuesday sometime next week just couldn't remember what day the 25th was uh, and I really hope you have a um, harmonious uh, weekend <laughs> like we will too. Right, see you Bye. later. Bye-bye.